Hello from NASA's Kennedy Space Center, where we are gearing up to launch the GOES-T weather satellite. NOAA's geostationary operational environmental satellites monitor the entire Western Hemisphere all of the time, and GOES-T is getting ready to join that proud fleet. I'm Katie Merson from NASA, and we are taking you behind the scenes of launching a weather satellite. So we're starting in what you might argue is one of the most exciting places during a launch, which is the rocket itself. And I'm here with some of the people who actually make this launch happen. We're going to hear what it takes and how they do it. First up, we have Manny Alfaro, who is the spacecraft in integration engineer with the United Launch Alliance. Hey, Manny, how's it going? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing really good. I'm excited. So am I. <laughs> I would hope so. All right. So tell me, where are we and what happens here? Uh, so we are inside of ULA's vertical integration facility. Uh, this facility is basically used to stack the Atlas V rocket. Uh, once the rocket is complete, we do uh, make the uh, spacecraft on top of the rocket here as well. Uh, once the uh, entire launch vehicle is complete, we do run a series of integrated tests as well to ensure compatibility between the spacecraft and the launch vehicle. Uh, that all happens inside of this facility here uh, prior to uh, giving the go-ahead to roll out to the pad for launch. That's pretty exciting. So we're, we're getting into the fun part. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> All right. How do you prepare for a launch? Uh, so preparing for a rocket launch actually starts uh, several years in advance with a lot of the uh, mission design and requirements and verification reviews. Uh, once that phase is complete, uh, we move into the phase of receiving all of our flight hardware here at the Cape, uh, getting the rocket established and prepared to receive the spacecraft uh, from the payload processing facility. Uh, and then once that's received, once we get mated here, we do run, like I mentioned, a, a series of integrated system tests to ensure compatibility between the spacecraft and the rocket itself. Uh, we run that to make sure that there's no incompatibilities that could cause any issues uh, on the way up to, on the ride up to space. Uh, once all that is completed and the testing is, uh, is uh, finalized, we run into the final uh, review meetings, which are uh, things such as the launch readiness review to ensure that the entire mission team is ready to support launch. Uh, that includes spacecraft, uh, Space Force, uh, NASA teams, as well as obviously the ULA launch team. Uh, once the final review is held, uh, we proceed on to rolling out of this facility over to uh, Launch Complex 41, which is where uh, we launch from. So that's kind of like the sprint at the end of the marathon, getting ready to launch this rocket. Sure is, yes. All right, so how many launches have you worked on, Manny? Uh, so in my three years at ULA, uh, I have uh, supported various missions in, in, uh, in a supporting role as a spacecraft integration engineer. However, this is my first uh, mission as a primary spacecraft integration engineer. And I'm very excited. I've learned a lot along the way, uh, and it'll help me uh, further my career uh, with the future launches that I'll be working on. So that is really exciting. Sure I'm, is. I'm now even more excited than I already was. <laughs> okay, so last question. What is your favorite part of launching a rocket? I would have to say my favorite part is actually the launch itself. You know, you uh, invest so much time over the years uh, from when you first uh, perform the mission kickoff all the work that goes in and to finally see the uh, spacecraft and the rocket lift off and uh, fly into space is quite an exciting uh, moment. You feel it in your chest and you feel it in your heart, right? Sure do. All right. Well, we'll be thinking of you this week, Manny, as you get closer to launch and we're really excited, wishing you luck. So go Atlas V and go ULA. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. So next up, we're going to check in with Michelle Rizzo. OST Program Mission Assurance Lead, and she's joining me in just a second to talk about the mission. Yeah, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm excited. I'm excited as well. <laughs> I would hope so. So tell me, what is your job on Ghost T? So I am the CSO, or the Chief Safety and Mission Assurance Officer. Um, so I am responsible for managing the mission assurance effort here for the Ghost T project. Um, so what that means is our mission assurance team provides independent oversight and support um, for a variety of different disciplines to make sure that we achieve the mission safely and successfully. That sounds like a really important job. It is, it is. It's a, it's a great part of a team to work on and I enjoy doing it. So. so how do you ensure that a satellite is ready for launch? So from a mission assurance perspective, we start early on in the program. Um, at the very beginning, we'll develop what's called a set of mission assurance requirements. Um, we develop those requirements to make sure our hardware is built and selected to the appropriate standards so that we can do this safely and successfully. 
Um, throughout the program, once we actually start getting that hardware in, we'll go ahead and make sure that it's been built correctly, we'll monitor operations, we'll do inspections, um, and then eventually we'll get to testing. And when we do testing, you know, we go through a, a lot of testing to make sure that the hardware is working appropriately and also that it can survive the environments that we expect to be in. Um, so we do tests to make sure we can survive launch. We also do tests to make sure that we can survive in our expected location on orbit. So making sure we can survive those temperature extremes and everything that we uh, anticipate to see in the vacuum of space. And there's a lot of changing temperature extremes from here on the ground to launch to space, yes. right? Yes, there are. So, And then, of course, anytime we have an anomaly uh, during that testing or during the build, um, my team is on the front lines really making sure that we resolve those anomalies, we drill down to root cause, and we have a corrective action in place so that we don't have that anomaly occur again. Well, that's really good. We want it to happen during testing and not yes, during yeah, launch. Much rather yes. find it out in testing so we have a successful flight. Yes. So tell me, uh, what will you be doing during the actual launch? So during the actual launch, um, I will actually be over in the control room with the spacecraft team. Um, I will be helping monitor uh, the telemetry as it comes in and making sure uh, everything is going to plan um, and also making sure that we're in the green and ready to go for launch. So some folks may not know, what is telemetry? Uh, so the telemetry is basically all the data that we have that comes back from the spacecraft that tells us uh, what are our heaters doing, uh, what are our different boxes reading, is everything uh, where it needs to be and is everything normal? That makes sense. All right, so thank you so much for joining. I'm so excited to see the launch. Yeah, and well. I'm excited to see, you know, the satellite in orbit too. Yes, absolutely. All right, well, thanks for joining us, Michelle. Um, good luck this week. Go, Ghost T. Thank you very much. All right, and thank you all for joining us. We're, this is just the first in a series of taking behind the scenes of launching the Ghost T weather satellite. Keep tuning in and we'll show you so much more that goes into this uh, spacecraft launch. And in the meantime, go Atlas V and go Ghost T.